Hello everybody and welcome to a little bit of coverage for The Binding of Isaac, Four Souls, Requiem. I did an unboxing of Requiem just a little bit ago and did mention in it that although the game is meant to be played adversarially, the Requiem box comes with rules for both a co-op mode and a solo mode and someone did ask in the comments, hey do you, do you like the solo mode? I've never played it solo so we're going to give it a test run today just to see how it compares. The the adversarial version of the game is fantastic, just to reiterate what I said in the unboxing, is really really good. There's a full scripted version on Tabletop Simulator if you want to try it. It's very good as that. Uh, the rules are basically the same for the solo mode, it's just that you're working cooperatively with two characters to try and achieve four souls between you both, as opposed to being the first person to get four souls before your opponents do if you're playing adversarially. Other than that, the rules are, are the same. Um, you get 8 rounds, although it's technically 16 I guess because a round is both your characters getting a turn. So technically it's 16. But we'll give it a go, I'll show you who I'm using and if you're not familiar with how the game plays at all, it is super simple. It's uh, essentially just beat monsters, beat boss monsters, get souls, buy items, get stronger and repeat until win or lose. Couldn't try Four Souls on the channel without playing his classic little baby Isaac with the D6 as his starting item. Let's him uh, make a Force a reroll actually because you can use it on other people if you choose to. When you start you get two health for most characters, there are some exceptions. Three pennies and three randomly drawn loot cards which I have not looked at. So we're going to turn around and see what they are and because we're playing solo we can just keep them on the table like this. So he's got two pennies, dig as and a dice shard and that is Isaac's starting hand. When someone starts their turn they draw one loot card and they can choose to attack, they can choose to tap items which is just doing that to do the ability on them. You can play one loot card from hand or you can tap your character card to play a second one and you can do that in other players turns as well because if you're playing the normal adversarial mode you want to mess with the other players, that's part of the fun. But for this it's mostly to help each other. And just because I'm a fan of Hollow Knight, I'm using the kind of bonus cameo character, one of many <laughs> that are in the box, the Knight from Hollow Knight. He has focus for every soul he gains up to three, he gets additional powers and strengths and things like that. He also has three pennies, two health and three loot cards. That's a four cent card that is some pills that could potentially win him or lose him some cash and more money. A bit more of a basic hand for him. So this isn't really a how to play for the basic rules of Four Souls, it's more so just showing off the solo variant. So that's why the D8 is here, that's going to count down our rounds. But the gist of it is, you have three bonus souls up in the top corner there, you don't have to use those, it's an optional rule. That is a criteria to aim for, to gain a soul that way instead of via killing. Loot card deck, draw one of them per turn. Room deck, that is the new optional rule as part of Requiem. And we're going to draw the top one now, just to see. Blood money. Each time a player dies, each other player gains 4 cents. So that is in play. When a character ends their turn in a turn in which they've killed something, they can choose to flip a new room card and it overwrites the one in play. They can be good or bad. Monster deck here, which is worth mentioning. Monster deck, item deck, loot deck, if you use all the cards in Requiem, which I am. They're huge, it's really really hard to shuffle them. I had to break them into like piles of 10 and I tried my best to shuffle them but they're, they're still going to be a little bit you know, in the way they were prior to shuffling just because there's so many of them. Over time it will sort itself, but you draw two starting monsters, they're in there. Over here is all the unused items, the shop. Uh, for 10 cents you can buy an item from the top of the item deck or you can buy one of the drawn ones that were just drawn at random. Birthright is in there and Pageant Boy, cover what they do if I actually buy them. And as far as setting up, I think that covers enough of it. You can check online, actually, <laughs> I'm not sure if this will work on a YouTube video, but if you scan that QR code there, you'll get a digital version of the rules, and you can check it out for yourself. And you're actively encouraged to work on your own variants, and things like that, right down here. And this is the page just talking about the solo mode variants. And you also, with Requiem, get a very handy little thing that tells you all the key terms you need for some of the cards. So with that, we're going to jump into the first turn and I'm going to try and gain across two characters a total of at least four souls. So I'll go through the first couple of turns slow and then we'll kind of speed up after that. I don't expect this to be a super long video because of the stringent time limit that it puts on the solo mode. 
but Isaac is going to start his turn. I didn't fully show off the two enemies that I randomly drew in the uh, boss or enemy pool. There is a Holy Mulligan and a Cursed Tumor. The reward you get for killing them is listed on the bottom of the card. The top of the card tells you how much HP they have, what roll on a d6 you need to get to hit them, and how much damage they do to you if you fail to meet that roll. So, for Isaac, we can play one of these cards. The Degas rune is for getting rid of curses, mostly, or to prevent damage. We don't really need to do either of that. We could use the dice sword. I'm going to... Oh, first of all, we have to draw a new card, of course. I am going to play the two cents regardless, but he has drawn the chariot. Choose a player to gain plus one damage and plus one health until the end of the turn. It's a good card, but we're going to play two cents, which means we have a lovely sack of pennies here with five cents and single cents in this. You get a bunch of them with the game. So we're just going to gain two cents, add that to the pile so he has five. And then we're going to attack the Holy Mulligan. We'll just put that in a discard pile. So we need three pluses. We only need one. And we keep going until someone dies. Either Isaac dies or the enemy dies. And at the end of a turn, everyone goes back to full health. Well, we rolled a two, which unfortunately means the Holy Mulligan hits Isaac for one health. And then we got a three plus, which means we have killed the Holy Mulligan. I'm just going to put the health back there because it's going to regen at the end of the turn anyway. So for defeating him, when this monster dies, expand the monster slots by two, which means two more monsters are going to appear. So I'm going to have to move the turn timer. You know what, I'll move it where it's more visible. Let's uh, move it down here. So there's going to be two extra monsters. The active player may attack an additional time this turn, actually. So we might want to attack, so I'll keep that one health away. He's not worth any souls, so he just gets discarded. I'll just put him up there. So his slot gets filled by the Holy Boney, which does seem to imply a lack of shuffling there. And then the two new slots he filled up, Swarm of Flies. We'll worry about the intricacies of what they do once I need to actually do things with them. And a secret room. So you have to roll and then a bunch of stuff happens, including just dying. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I rolled a two. Uh, discard two loot cards. Well, I'm keeping the chariot because the chariot's really good. So the dice shard and the Degas rune, they are out of here. That's unfortunate. That then just gets discarded like it would if a monster was killed and we fill the space again. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's a chest. I rolled a five, which is loot three. Bag lunch is a trinket. Oh, golden horseshoe is a trinket and three cents. We'll just assume those happen to be together. So Isaac filled his hand back up. This ended up being a lot longer first turn than I thought. Normal monster, please. Okay, that that, that that's down to not being uh, shuffled properly. But hey, at least we get to roll the dice a lot. Loot two. Okay, a soul heart which eats a bit of damage. And a oh, a Bercano rune. Destroy that item if item was controlled by a player. They steal an item from the shop, so you can destroy one of your own items as well, I guess. The next one is a chest, I'll shuffle it back into the deck and we'll just draw a monster. Oh, it is, it's a horrifying monster, it's a flaming hopper. So that is now the assortment of monsters in here. Um, Isaac could, you know what, Isaac is going to attack again, I think, but let me sort my hand first. Alright, I am going to attack with Isaac again. I'm going to attack the Holy Boney because it is also a 3 plus to try and kill, but if you roll a six while it's active, they can look at the top three cards of the deck and put them back in any order. So I'm looking for a six. That's a one, I think. That is a one. So Isaac would die if I didn't do anything about it. So I'm going to tap Isaac's card to play the so hard loot card he got, which means that absorbs the one damage and hope that I don't roll a one again. I didn't, but I did roll a two. So Isaac immediately dies. That's usually how it goes because yeah, the knight doesn't have anything that will save him. So when you die, you discard an item, but you don't discard your starting item because it can't be destroyed. You lose a penny and you lose a loot card. I'm going to lose the golden horseshoe. Good, bye. And with that, Isaac has essentially wasted his turn. So it's still round one, the knight gets a turn. He draws a loot card. It is a battery, which you use to recharge items. Uh, speaking of which, he will uh, use some pills for his item just to get a dice roll out of the way, why not? That is a one, which means, oh, he gains four cents. Okay, that's pretty good. In that case, one, two, three, four. There we go, one, two, three, four. Good enough. And he's gonna attack the 
Holy Boney and try and kill it. And with a six, he does, and he can look at the top three cards of any deck and put them back in any order. He's going to do that for the monster deck. So let me just draw the top three and put them back in any order. I can see forever a horrible fistula and a horrible the bloat. He's a boss, he's worth one soul, so is Fistula, but Fistula is easier to kill, I think. Let's do it that first. I can see forever second, and the bloat afterwards. So, we've defeated the Holy Boney. When you defeat him, you loot two. So we'll do that as well. That, that's a very large pill. Wow. <laughs> and, more pennies. I'll just put it on this side. And before we end his turn, he's not allowed to attack again. He successfully has finished. He did kill an enemy, so he could technically activate another room. Oh, uh, another... Yeah, I do mean another room. Although, Isaac died, so he gains four cents from that as well. I think he's going to spend ten. You can buy one item in your turn. So when Isaac died, he would have gained four. So if I spend six, it still leaves him with one. And I'm going to take a gamble and buy Pageant Boy for ten. And what this happens is, well, you don't do it right now, but you can choose to destroy it. And if you do, you roll a die and you get four times the result. So we would need at least a three not to make a loss. But that's okay. And then the shop gets populated by the top item of the item deck. Or treasure deck, I should say. So the golden razor blade is now in the shop. Again, we'll worry about that if we buy it. So Hollow Knight, he has played one card. Um, you know what? He'll, he'll tap himself and just play one of the four cents to get four of those pennies back to be a little bit rich. He'll end his turn and that means it's the end of an entire round so our timer is ticking down to seven and we're going to speed up a little bit now but that's the general flow of how the solo slash co-op mode works. Right, I know we're a bit for far from the enemies but I think this view might work. So Isaac comes back to life, two health, we draw our loot card, cow on a trash farm. Choose a player until the start of their next turn. Their character is named Cow and loses all abilities, and each item they control is named Trash and loses all abilities except eternal items. Uh, not useful for a co-op mode or solo mode. That's another thing to mention. A lot of the game is based around the adversarial aspect. Oh, we forgot to repopulate another monster. We know what it is. It's Fistula with some guest art, because that is not Edmund's art. Each time this takes damage, put a counter on this. Other monsters are harder to hit by one for each counter on this. So if we go after it, it's a 50-50 chance to hit him. And he's got three health. We can make that better with Isaac. We're going to play the chariot. So we have three health. And we do two damage per hit. So I only need a 50-50 roll to go in my favour twice which has been going very well so far. So that's a 2, which would mean he hits us for 1. Um, I'm going to use the d6. We're going to tap it for the turn, which means I get to reroll. I rolled into a 2 again, so Isaac has taken the bonus health damage from the card. Try again. Okay, we got a 6. So that would normally be 1 damage. It is 2 damage. Fistula has one health left. Would put a count on him, but I'm hoping he's about to die, so it won't matter. That is a three. That is not good enough, so Isaac loses his first health. Let's try again. It rolled slightly off camera. Oh no, it was, it was visible. It was another six. Fistula is defeated. You get eight pennies for defeating Fistula. I'm just going to subtract two from Isaac, because he's going to buy... Ooh, let's buy... The top of the item deck. It could be anything, even a boat. It's a battery pack. At the end of your turn, put a counter on this. You can remove two counters to recharge an item controlled by a player. So not necessarily just your own. Most important thing though is, that is worth a soul. Down there in the bottom right, that's what that means. Plus one soul. So of the four needed by the team, I guess. I'll put this to one side on the bottom left of the camera. They now have one and a quarter of the way there. Isaac is still alive on one health. He can't attack again though. This got used up. He will tap himself to play this for three pennies, and then that, that's it. So we'll get those two back, plus one more. Because we can get bonus souls, uh, you randomize which bonus souls you get. The ones I have in player Envy, which isn't going to be relevant for co-op, unfortunately, or solo. Greed, which is if you have 25 cents, you gain that soul. And Gluttony, if you have a hand of 10 cards, 
you gain the soul. So as we come over to Hollow Knight, we do need to draw this card, but we already know what it is. I can see forever. Look at the top six cards of the loot deck, put them back in any order, then loot one. So we need the top six. Two, three, four, five, six. And this would have happened in Isaac's turn, so Isaac is getting whatever goes on top. Ooh, there's a lot of good stuff here. Hmm, you know what, let's put it back in this order so that Isaac gets the devil, no, Isaac gets the stars, then the devil, and we'll just leave the rest as is. I'm not sure what Fiendfire does, I just know it's a reference to Slay the Spire. So Isaac has the stars card, so he can get rid of that to gain more treasure. We're into the knight's turn, we know now that he's drawing the devil. Destroy an item you control, if you do, steal a non-eternal item from a player or from the shop. So, we're going to tap Pageant Boy, destroy it, so it is just getting discarded. We roll and get four times the amount. Please roll high. <laughs> That's a one. Oh, can Isaac help there? No, because he's tapped. He could have used the d6 to help him. Well, that means he gains four pennies. That was I was trying to get the soul agreed via this card, and it's not going to work out that way. He gets four pennies back of the ten it cost him. Which, oh yeah, he's untapped now as well. Not great, but whatever. Well, in that case, let's use big pills, because what could possibly go wrong? You roll three times and do what it says. Five, you take one damage. Excellent. Five, you take one damage, he's dead. Then it would have been plus one damage. That's that's uh, four souls. So he is dead. He doesn't have any non-eternal items, so he will discard a little battery and one penny and rolls down to six just like that oh we need to repopulate another monster we will do that now even though he's dead and we know it's the blow because we saw it earlier he is hard to kill ah as we come back to isaac and he untaps his items because blood money is still in play uh he gains four cents i'm going to give him a five so i'm just going to take away one just to save on space a little bit so he's got five six seven eight nine ten one of them needs to go for the soul of greed because that's part of my plan um who, how much has hollow knight got two four six he's got eight i guess isaac will hold off well actually but hollow knight's got a bunch of money in his hand we'll use the stars card either way each player gains plus one treasure then you gain one treasure actually they, they've changed this card oh it's a special version of it that's why this card used to just be you gain a treasure so this is everybody gains a treasure because everybody else does first before you do Makes it nicer, I guess. So, this will be Hollow Knight's item, because it says other players first. He got the Smelter uh, as an item. And then Isaac got Guppy's Paw. That's very apt, and Guppy is his cat. So you can tap it to pay one power, and if you do choose a player to prevent the next damage they would take, or up to two damage they would take this turn. Okay. I can't remember if the Guppy transformation is something that's relevant here. Oh, there's a soul of Guppy you can earn, and Guppy is a playable character. But other than that, I don't think it's super relevant. So, did I remember to draw a loot card at the top of his turn? I don't think I did. No. So we have question mark card. As you play this, choose an item. This copies one of the item's tap abilities. Who will we attack? Oh, I don't think I've rolled any fours yet, but if I do, the cursed tumor takes uh, deals rather one damage to each player. Let's go after. Ooh, let's go after the hopper. We have to get a four or a five to kill it because it takes no damage on a six. Oh, if we take a four, then uh, let's roll a five. <laughs> of course, I roll a four. Um, you know what? We'll take the four. We take one damage because of the cursed tumor. Hollow Knight doesn't because he's currently dead. We killed the Flaming Hopper for four whole pennies, so I'm just going to take away another one and give myself a five, just because it's easier. And we repopulate with, ugh, this is another guest artist, uh, Begotten. Well, this is at two health or less, it has plus two difficulty to hit, so it gets harder to kill. Alright, uh, you could tap and play one more thing, so he will. Just tap. And play Bank Lunch is a trinket, it just goes into play on his person. If this would be destroyed, you put a counter on it instead and you have plus one HP while it has a counter. If you had to destroy it or you know get rid of it again, it will break. But it's technically plus one HP. 
I'll put that over there. Sometimes you have a lot of items in this game. So that is Isaac done. You know what? He's going to put a new room into play. Just to see what happens. Equality. If a player would gain any number of pennies, instead each player gains that number of pennies. That's really good. Okay, that means that the soul of greed is not an out there possibility. Mr. Hollow Knight is no longer deceased. He is back. He needs to get the souls because that's how he gets stronger. His loot card is four cents. We'll just play that immediately. Tap him and play that as well. As long as one of them gets to 25. So that's a total of eight. So I'm going to give him, if I can find two silver coins, that is. There's not as many of them in the, the bag. Let's just tip them out. There we are. I'm going to give him 10, take away two. Take away those two. So that's 10, 12, 14, 16. So he's getting there. So that's his two cards played for the turn. He is done. And he will attack with this stringent time limit. You really do have to kind of get in there. Uh, the last two hits have got to be four pluses. Yeah, he'll try and fight the begotten. So he just needs two pluses. That was a three, so that's one damage. There's two damage, but he takes one damage from the cursed tumor. So does Isaac, actually. That's a one. Isaac's going to use the d6 because he didn't in his turn to let him re-roll it. That's a five, so it's fine. Now he has two health left, so he needs two four pluses. Not likely. Yeah, not likely. <laughs> so unfortunately he is dead again. And that's going to be the end of the round anyway. So we're down to five rounds. That goes away. The smelter goes away. And we'll destroy the two cents card as well. You know, it just occurred to me there, Isaac would not have been able to use the d6 because he was dead, I think. Oh, wait, no, he wasn't dead, he was just tapped. But he, I, I, the, the d6 was not tapped, so yeah, we're fine. Either way, Hall Knight still died, so it doesn't matter really. So he's drawing a loot card. Oh yeah, Fire Fiend. As a cost to play this, discard your hand, deal X number of damage, divided as you choose to any number of monsters or players, where X is the number of loot cards discarded to play this. Oh! So the cost to play this is discard your hand, so do you include this card in it so it would be 4 damage? The OX divided as you choose. Wow! Okay, well we don't need to use that yet. What we should do then is try and land a single hit on the bloke and then discard his hand to kill it. That seems like the best bet. It's a 4 plus. Each time the attacking player misses an attack die roll, they roll a die. Uh, two dice, actually. If the results are the same, they just get killed. <laughs> sure. Let's try and hit him. That's a one. That would not hit him. The d6 is recharged. So we'll use it. Come on, buddy. That is enough to hit him. He takes one damage, though, because of the cursed tumor, but it's hopefully not going to matter. So now the bloat has four health left. We're using fiend fire, discarding the entire hand, and killing the bloat. Horrible, hor he's horrible in the game as well. So that is the second soul that Isaac has gained right there. And he gains one treasure as well for killing him. Friendly Sack. Look at the top three cards of the loot deck. You put one in your hand and put the rest in another player's hand. Oh, interesting. Not familiar with that item. So he did tap that. That would have two on it. Uh... We'll use the two counters on battery pack, which I didn't mark, but it has been two turns to recharge the D6, so that it might be used in the knight's turn. And... Didn't have anything else to play, but yeah, oh, we have to draw a new monster. Everything to remember when it's not scripted. Roundworm, it's a 5 plus to hit, but he only needs one hit to die. Each time this deals combat damage, the attacking player has a plus one to their next attack. Ah, it gets easier to kill the more you miss. <laughs> That's handy. Alright, the Hollow Knight is back. His loot card is two cents. We're just going to immediately play that because he is going towards the... Oh, in fact, how close is he? No, that was only two. So that's two, four, six. He's at 17 of the 25. Not good enough. Alright, well, we'll just attack then. Let's try and attack the Roundworm, you know. Let's, let's just do it. So it's a five plus. I saw it there for a second, so he gets hit, and oh, and he rolled a four, so he just dies. <laughs> sure! Hollow Knight's not having a good game. He loses a penny, he loses that last card. 
you can't do anything else and we tick down to only we're halfway th well we're now halfway through our time four rounds were left i just realized i forgot i recharged the d6 for isaac specifically so i could try and help out the knight so we're just going to do a re-roll on that four to try for a five doesn't matter still would have died that's fine fair enough so now it rolls around to isaac's turn that will come back then and we draw a loot card doesn't look like we're getting the soul of gluttony greed but why is this an item this is a meme from the video game when this is put in a monster slot expand monster slots by one it's an ambush this becomes a monster in a monster slot not being attacked the active player must make an additional attack on it this turn so we i'm going to cover the cursed tumor then oh wait, no it says expand it by one though so maybe it, no, but then it says you put it over one hmm a monster in a monster slot not being attacked oh yeah so it is an extra monster this is getting awkward you don't usually have to have five active monsters for the game that's very different and he has to do an extra attack this turn and it has to be to attack greed spot which is a meme from a mode called greed mode in the video game well he's only a two plus to hit but he's got to do it eight times can i roll i've rolled 13 ones in a row before for the record uh, he'll, he'll attack Greed's butt then because he has to. So, two pluses. There's one. There's two. There's three. That was three fives. What? <laughs> There's four. There's five. Six. Seven. Eight. Isaac has defeated Greed's butt. The things this game makes me say. It is worth 13 pennies. I guess I'll discard the item deck because it is an item. 13 pennies is pretty significant. So 13, let's just look that out. I'm lucky for some, but not Isaac, because he's having so much more luck than the knight. 13. Oh, that puts him at 26. I just dropped one of the fives on the floor, but that would put him at 20. Yeah, he's at 26. There we go. Which means he immediately claims the soul of greed, for he is the first player to have 25 cents or more. So he has gained one soul for that. That's three of the four souls we need, and Isaac got them all. The knight has done nothing but die. <laughs> so we have to fill that space in the monster pool. Oh, trap door. You have to roll. Okay, let's see what happens. If you get a one to a three, you would look at the no. Take one damage. Well, luckily, greed didn't hit him, so he's not dead. But that gets discarded. Try again. Delirium, that's like one of the super secret bosses. While this active player control oh, while the active player controls two souls, monsters have plus one difficulty to hit. If the active player controls three souls, he does. Monsters have plus two to hit instead. He also has Indomitable, which I believe means you can't put another monster on top of him. Which is really bad. That means we need to try and find a way just to gain a Oh actually. The Soul of Envy kicks in. What does this do again? The first time a player controls their third soul, yes. The active player chooses a player who controls the fewest souls or tied for the fewest. That player gains this soul. Never mind, we actually just won. Because that means Isaac has to give this to another player. He gives it to the knight. Now technically you could argue you're not allowed to use this card solo. It doesn't say that in the rules, but if you were fine tuning them, you would take out stuff that is more so meant for adversarial. But because of this, Hollow Knight actually gains that, and we get our four souls right there. There's our four souls collected. Two of them were the bonus ones, which are optional rules. So that was an abrupt ending that just kind of happened, but that is four souls. Games can last 20 minutes, five minutes sometimes. I've played a bunch of this with friends in Tabletop Simulator. Sometimes the games last an hour. It depends how much you backstab each other. It depends on the RNG of cards you draw, of monsters you draw. We wouldn't have been able to kill anything else. We've got no damage ups and Delirium forces everything to be harder to hit. It would have meant, what, he was a 4 plus to hit, and then becoming a 6 plus to hit. 4 plus, 6 plus, 6 plus. We wouldn't have been able to attack anything else. He, granted, he's a 3 plus, and I think it only affects other monsters. Uh, uh, active player? No monsters, it affects him as well. So he would have been a 5 plus to hit 5 times. So yeah, that would have been a loss condition right there, had we not had those optional souls in play. There's more than you need, there's only ever three in play, and I think there's six of them, six or seven, so you shuffle them. I mean, it was just random, the ones I drew. But uh, yeah, we got there in the end. 
half the time used, but those last four rounds, I can't see us drawing anything that would have been able to get rid of Delirium, unless we drew Chaos card, maybe, that insta-kills a boss. But that's a one in... Hmm. I don't remember which deck it's in. It's either in the treasure deck or the loot deck. That's a one in, like, 400, and that's a one in 500 chance, so... Not ideal. Might have to try more of this, to, to just try out some more of the solo variant. The knight didn't really get a fair shake there, unfortunately. I do need to shuffle the decks more as well, but I, I still recommend the adversarial mode, and usually I wouldn't, because I'm, I'm more so about co-op and solo, but the adversarial mode of Four Souls is fantastic. Really, really great fun. Solo mode, co-op mode, not, not as much. Not, not as much. And the eight round time limit, essentially 16 turns across eight rounds, it's constricting, especially for how many cards there are available for the game now. But if you were curious about how the solo mode slash co-op mode works in Four Souls Requiem, that's the gist of it. Sometimes you can get super lucky, like there. Other times you can get super unlucky, like the poor knight who just died over and over trying to kill four plus, three plus enemies. It happens. That's Four Souls. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that was informative. See you in the future for something else. Until then, ta-ta for now.